In this video, we're going to look at how to undertake an electrical installation condition report, as introduced with Amendment Number 1 of the 17th edition of the Wiring Regulations, in this case on a dwelling. It's important to point out that this is still purely inspection and testing, as required by Chapter 6.2 of the regs, and the electrical installation condition report form replaces the old purely inspection report form. So what's the thinking behind this change then, Tony? Well, for years, when I've been talking about PIRs, I've always told people that what they're doing is reporting on the condition of that installation. So the change of name really makes sense, especially to the recipient, who in many cases is not going to be an electrical expert. But it's important to realise that it's more than just a change of name. There are a considerable number of changes from the old periodic inspection report form, which we'll investigate and put into practice throughout this video. So the first questions we need to ask ourselves are, what is periodic inspection and testing? Why do we need to do it? When do we need to do it? And finally, who can do it? Periodic inspection and testing is necessary because like everything else, electrical installations deteriorate with age run into the gas and the water installation pipes. The size of main protective bonding conductors is always selected from the appropriate table in the regulations, and 10 mm squared is fine for most installations with a cross-section area of the supply neutral conductor is 35 mm squared or less. The conductors are connected in an appropriate place for both the gas and the water installation pipes using BS951 clamps, and are also suitably identified with the correct label. Where the installation has supplementary bonding conductors, which we might find in this house in the bathroom, these will also need to be checked for labels. Absence of an earthing and bonding label would only be a C3 condition on the report, but absence of main protected bonding, if required by the regulations, would be a C2, as would absence of an effective means of earthing. I'll point out here, Dave, that the reason absence of means of earthing is only a C2, that is not an immediate danger, such as an exposed live part. But don't forget that even a single C2 will result in an installation being given an overall assessment of unsatisfactory. Tony will go around the installation to each accessible accessory. A reading can then be taken from metallic faceplates or fixing screws. If there's no reading, Tony will identify on his sketch the item so that he can go back and give it a visual inspection. The R2 test will also enable Tony to identify, in many cases, the furthest extremity of accessories on radial circuits, indicating a good location to carry out ZS or R1 plus R2 tests later on. Now it's good practice to record the R2 readings. Now what I'm also going to put down is if I'm going to inspect any items. Now I'm not going to inspect this item, but items I'm going to inspect, I'll put a big V on my diagram. It's good old rectum protectum, because what I'm doing, I'm putting down what I actually do inspect and what I don't inspect. Well, next we what have we'll several things to check for recessed luminaires, such as downlighters. First, are the correct type and rating of lamp fitted? For example, some fittings must have an aluminium reflector type lamp fitted. Now we only have downlighters here in the kitchen and also in the bathroom, so it's not too much to ask to quickly drop the lamps. And as well as checking the type of lamp, with it removed, in most cases you can tell if the fitting is fire rated, as these are entirely enclosed, whereas other types have open backs, and that's clearly what we have here. For this installation, because it's not fire rated and there's no protective hood, the next box will be marked with a C3. For other installations where you can't gain access because you don't want to cause damage or you simply can't get there, that will have to be marked as a limitation. And the reading I've got is 0.17 ohms with a PFC of 1.37 Ka. The distribution network operators declare the value of impedance for a TNCS supply to be 0.35 of an ohm. So our 0.17 is lower than this, most likely accounted for due to being close to the local supply transformer. But don't forget that where network switching takes place, this can also cause impedance values to go up or down. Now I've reconnected the earthing conductor and will now undertake the reading of respective short circuit current. 
This is taken between line and neutral on the incoming side of the main switch. ZS is used to determine whether a protective device will operate within the required time when there's a fault between line and earth. For a final circuit on a single phase TN installation, this is 0.4 of a second. Maximum values of earth fault loop impedance for different types and rating of protective device are given in tables 41.2 to 41.5. So for our lighting circuits, we can determine ZS by adding ZE, which we determined during the prospective earth fault current test, to our value of R1 plus R2. Now looking at table 41.3, we can see that the maximum ZS for the 6 amp type B circuit breaker to operate is 7.67 ohms. Now our ZS is well below this, but it's important to remember that the regulations do require an adjustment to the figure to allow for the increase of the resistance of conductors with increase of temperature when a circuit is under load. You can find guidance on this in Appendix 14, but I always call it the 80% rule of thumb method. So basically the tabulated ZS needs to be reduced to 80% of its value. You can do this just by multiplying by 0.8. Look at a few pertinent this points. is then compared. Well, looking at the front page, I've filled in the extent of the LEX installation. I've also filled in the agreed limitations and the operational limitations. I've put down the reasons for this and whom they were agreed with. Our purpose of report was mortgage application because the house is going onto the market. It would not be right to put something like client request or to check safety here, although if you put to check the safety of the electrical installation after flooding, this would be acceptable.